Chromatography is the process of separating molecules based on their unique properties. In this video, we will focus on four of the more common types of chromatography, namely size exclusion, ion exchange, hydrophobic interactions, and affinity chromatography. Each type is differentiated based on chemical modifications made to the material or resin used in the separation process. Size exclusion chromatography is accomplished using resins comprised of beads having specific pore sizes. Based on the size of the pores, small proteins are retained within the beads, while larger proteins pass through the column. Using this principle, larger proteins can be separated from smaller ones. In contrast to size exclusion chromatography, ion exchange resins separate proteins based on their charge. A protein's charge is related to its isoelectric point, which depends on the protein's secondary structure and the pH of the solution containing the protein. By definition, a protein will have no net charge when the pH of the solution equals the protein's isoelectric point. A protein in a solution at a pH below its isoelectric point will have a net positive charge, whereas a protein in a solution at a pH above its isoelectric point will have a net negative charge. In ion exchange chromatography, the beads comprising the resins can be selected with either positive or negative charges. When using this process to separate proteins, negatively charged ion exchange resins can bind to positively charged proteins and separate them from negatively charged proteins. Similarly, positively charged resins will bind negatively charged proteins, allowing them to be separated from positively charged proteins. Hydrophobic interactions chromatography utilizes resins comprised of beads containing straight alkyl chains or aryl chains that bind hydrophobic pockets within the proteins passing through the column. This binding is affected by the type and concentration of salt included in the solution, with increased binding being associated with higher salt concentrations. After the proteins are bound, they are looted from resins by decreasing the salt concentration in the solution. In extreme cases, water is used to elute ligands. A fourth type of chromatography is called affinity chromatography. Although there are many types of affinity chromatography, they all share a common approach that separates proteins based on the presence or absence of specific protein characteristics. For example, proteins can be expressed that have six histidine residues in a row, commonly known as a his tag. When resins comprise of beads with nickel bound to a nitrilo triacetate molecule are used in chromatography columns, they selectively bind histag proteins. Because most proteins lack six histidine residues in a row, they don't bind and pass through the column. To release or elute the bound protein from the resin, imidazole, a molecule very similar to histidine, is washed over the column. This causes the histag protein to separate from the resin and be collected in the eluent. For any of the chromatography approaches to work, they require liquid to flow across the surface of the resins. Several different types of equipment can be utilized to achieve flow over resins. These systems have the ability to measure UV absorbance, pH, or connectivity. The systems that measure UV absorbance do so at a range of wavelengths, with 280 nanometers being the one used most commonly. This wavelength is used most often because the amino acids tyrosine and tryptophan, which are present in most proteins, have a very specific absorption at 280 nanometers. This simplifies the process of detecting proteins in the solutions passing through the column. There are several steps in a typical chromatography process. The first step is preparation of the column. There are a range of prepack columns that are available commercially. Alternatively, specific resins can be purchased and used to pack the column manually. Next, the sample must be prepared. This often requires concentrating the sample followed by addition or removal of certain buffers and salts that are compatible with the process to be used. Once these steps have been completed, the chromatography process can be performed. After the column is equilibrated with the appropriate buffer, the sample containing the protein is loaded onto the column. 
The column is then washed with the equilibration buffer to remove any protein that does not bind to the resin. In ion exchange chromatography, a second buffer is used to elute the protein from the column. The second buffer can be applied either as a step gradient or a linear gradient. When the step gradient approach is used, the composition of the solution used to elute material from the columns is changed in steps. In other words, the relative concentrations of salt in the first and second buffers is increased in a stepwise fashion to elute the unwanted material from the column and then to remove the target protein. When the linear gradient approach is used, the salt concentration of the first buffer is increased to selectively remove the tightly bound target protein. After the gradient is run, the second buffer is passed over the column to ensure that all proteins are eluted. Samples, which are called fractions, are collected through the process and can then be analyzed for the presence of the protein. Once you have completed the chromatography run, you will need to analyze the fractions to determine where your protein eluded, whether it is active, and how pure it is. These tests can vary, but most proteins can be analyzed for purity using sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, or SDS PAGE. We will discuss SDS PAGE in a separate video. If the protein is an enzyme, it may be possible to assess its activity before and after purification. Alternatively, western blots and ELISA assays can be performed using antibodies that are specific for the protein of interest.